Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Inside the Barrel Pints. This time we're going to revisit another topic we talked about previously, playbooks and uh, some... <laughs> Where's our sound effects? Yeah, that's, so, that was uh, a great sound effect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Dorian's going to tell us about uh, common playbook activities. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll we'll kind of go over some basics. If uh, you've never used playbook or you're just getting started with playbook, some of the the gotchas that you, you may run into, or kind of you know jumpstart your your development in that space. Okay, perfect. Um, and for those that don't know anything about playbooks, you know, playbooks is kind of ServiceNow's new way to handle um, cross department uh, processes. So if you have a process that may have multiple different types of fulfillers or may cross multiple teams or even just a complex process that you need to follow exact steps for maybe compliance or something like that. Uh, you know, playbooks are, are a really good way to, to, to handle that. Um, yeah. it, it, it's built off of, uh, you know, like the underlying uh, architecture is built off of Flow Designer. So um, a lot of it, you know, runs through things in Flow and, and starts and stops between those things. So perfect, perfect. Let's, let's jump right in. Um, so I have a few different screens on here um, where I think I, I did some, you know, oven work behind the scene just to, uh, <laughs> so we, to, to keep us up to speed. Um, but essentially, uh, I love the magic oven. <laughs> what I did is for this demo, I just set up a trigger on the incident table. Very simple. Okay. Um, we, we went through that in our last uh, demo and this is kind of the screen you get to once you've gone through all of the screens on when something is done with a trigger, you've named it, um, and you've said like the, the trigger is like a record create. And so what what I want to kind of talk about first is lanes. So lanes are the the things that when you uh, that are kind of like the stages that something may go through and a lane may have multiple activities. Uh, so in this case, uh, a lane may be like intake is probably the most common one. There's something that happens or there's work that you do when uh, information or is coming in. There's probably another lane that's normally like assess, right? So this is like you're checking data on something, you're mm -hmm. maybe actually res like working on the ticket. Um, and then there's probably at like at your core, like some sort of resolve, right? So there's some sort of like, now you're in the final stages of it. You're closing things out. You're sending notifications. And if you if you don't know where to start with lanes, I would probably just tell people to start with these three. Um, there's Makes maybe sense. a fourth um, uh, in there, maybe for like a work in progress or something like that. But you know, keeping it simple is kind of really the way to the way you want to go. And uh, uh, the a, a note about this is an act. Uh, Playbook won't actually show up unless you actually have an activity uh, inside of the lane. So even if you activated this, like it's and you created an incident, it's not actually going to show up. You really actually need at least an activity um, in each of these lanes. And so the activities that I think are you're you're definitely going to run into is instructions. So instructions is very simple. What what this will do is this will just show up. So I, I normally like to start with an instruction before uh, you get in, you jump into things. And this can be, you know, like review this playbook, you know, this playbook uh, contains a process for X, Y, and for incidents. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would have been fine with X, Y, Z. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I'd add a little bit more. So that's kind of your, your your first one. So you'll definitely use instructions, especially if you're about to go through a bunch of complex things. Instruction yeah. is, is normally a really good one. And then yeah. pretty much after that, uh, user form is probably like the de facto standard. If so, normally back you know back in the day before playbooks, you would essentially have your your incident page, right, where you mm -hmm. would you know review like all the fields on there. User form is like that replication where you can do like bite sizes of information. So let's say on the intake, you had some sort of like review contact information. Um, and uh, essentially the, the table you select in our case is, is incident. 
um, and development instances run slow. So this Google search will come up right away. Well, while it's searching, let me ask you a question. Is, and I don't remember if we covered this before, but playbooks are not, or are playbooks part of ServiceNow Core? Like, are they, they're, they're not going to be an extra fee or anything like that. These are part of, what you're going to get with like your basic ITSM implementation. Correct. Uh, Correct. Okay. Yeah. It is part of the core. You don't have to, the, you would potentially have to pay a fee if you wanted to do um, like playbooks on custom tables. So there sure. is like the app engine side of this that mm. you want to do it on any table, but any of your core tables, um, any of your core task tables, uh, this should be included. Perfect. Because, I, you know, I, I, as you were talking about with incidents, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, man, this would make, you know, for your internal help desk team, this really does uh, make the flow so much better, you know? Totally, totally. And and there is, I'll actually show, they ServiceNow shipped out like an incident response demo we'll oh, show at the end. So, perfect. Um, where they, they go through a bunch of different activities. So nice, the incident nice. record, right? So, so the basic setup, you want to review contact information rather than overwhelming the agent with um, all of the fields that they, they need. What you can do mm -hmm. is you select the view. So either the default view or maybe your workspace, the views that already are created. And then you just put in the, the name of the, the field. And, and, and that's really it for, for user form. And, and so we'll, We'll actually test this out to kind of. Oh, so, okay. So that means that it doesn't like, you know, from a portal point of view, stuff I work on all the time. If you define, you know, if you say, hey, use this view, that view is what defines what field show and all that. But you can actually just use a, a view and then tell it only these fields show up. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. And so in, in San Diego, they have this playbook preview, which is really nice now that you can kind of continuously preview your kind of similar to your your flow if you wanted to test your flow um, mm -hmm. and it'll probably take a little bit to run but notice <laughs> notice remember how i said lanes don't show up unless they have activities so right lanes right don't, don't show up right so here is that instructional one you know mm -hmm. review this playbook you can you know skip it or mark as complete there is some functionality where you can restart that as well so let's say you wanted to go back and restart um, and if this did work, if I did everything right, it should have shown here with just my field. So obviously there is something that I'm missing here, um, but um, let's see if I can, you know, quickly figure that out. So incident, it's on this one. I feel like the works, the form view workspace would have worked. Um, oh, try just and, try default. Oh, it's it's probably called ID. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what oh, working is, out of memory <laughs> yeah yeah um you know it's okay we'll just run the the playbook again and what's kind of cool is on a given incident you may have multiple playbooks you don't need all of your playbooks to be super complex they can trigger at like different times in a process that um that would kind of uh work right so in this case like i imagine you had one playbook for you know you know, some part of the, the process, you can then say when it gets to this state, go trigger a different playbook and keep your mm -hmm. playbooks bite size. Um, yeah. So yeah. in this case, we're, we, we're, we're jumping into it and this one should show my field. And so here you go, right? And what's, what's nice about this is um, one, you can update a record, right? So this is essentially just clicking the update button inside of um, uh, inside the platform, or you can mark as complete, which also updates and then moves on. The, the, the nice part about this is if you had UI policies related to this field, it will also work here. So like there, there could be a case where the, when the caller is empty, you know, don't show anything, but maybe when you fill in the caller, have some fields show up at, as well. And that sure, will show up. Sure. So yeah, so that's, so that's the user form one probably the most common one because that means you can have, you know, we could add another activity here for user form that maybe after contact details, you want to, you know, review assignment group, right? So it's, it's, it's very like small bite-sized things rather than seeing a complicated um, display form.
Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, you know, it's as an end user myself, I don't like huge forms. And, um, I, you know, I, I want to see what's just specific to what I'm doing. Right. And then, you know, I can see it from a help desk person's point of view. It's same thing. You know, instead of having the entire form show up, you got to scroll from the top to the bottom to just add some notes, yada, yada, yada. You know, it'd be very easy to set it up as a playbook and have specific pieces uh, consumable by that help desk technician. Yeah. And sometimes, right, like, especially if you have like UI policies on, on change stuff or client scripts on change, if you're just having it all on one form, they may enter information in different times and then it like not actually give the end result that you're expecting. Um, so the, I would say that the, the last, or not the last one, the, the second last one that I think is really common is this checklist task. So mm -hmm. it could be the case that it's not a bunch of fields that you have, but you have like just a checklist of things you need to do maybe in another system. Um, sure. So what you can do is a checklist task. It's like, you know, um, incident checklist. Yeah. Like, um, you know, if, if you don't have an integration set up and you, you're making an order mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, you got to send a, a packing label out or something like that for a return, that checklist would be nice, you know, Yep. contact third-party vendor and then do that and you know yeah and so i'm going to select the one that is already exists from this demo but i'll actually show where you can create these checklists because it's actually not intuitive um, there's no like create if you wanted to create one um, what's nice about this is by default and i'll, I'll show when i save this by default um, the uh, advanced properties here this is normally if if it doesn't have like a, a checklist like if you don't select the task that you want this like maybe the current task for example it's going to default creating a task and putting a checklist on it um, mm. and so that you have to be careful here because of permissions right like not everyone has access to the task field right so right you may right. get into an issue where it doesn't so what you could do is just make it the incident right and mm -hmm. the, the incident table, but be careful if, if you did this, then it's going to create a new incident and put a check. <laughs> right. Um, and so that's where this inputs comes in. Right. So the, what task do you want this to be on? This is where you would, you know, potentially put it on the triggered task. So this will oh, now put yeah. the checklist on the task that, um, that you're working on. Of, Does it put, it just puts it into a uh, description or the notes. No, like task or the checklist is a uh, an activity formatter. Um, so okay. it's it's like a special you know field. So let's okay. go ahead and uh, test this again on our same record, so that it'll show up uh, here pretty shortly. And so the actual field, um, let's see. Or sorry, where to where to create the checklist? Let me go pull that up as well, because um, I, I think that's that one took me a while uh, to find. Yeah, perfect. So, so where where you get that is under the checklist underscore table, um, and for example, like this is the the checklist. And so this is kind of not the best interface, but what you can do is once you create one, right, you can you know copy it along the others. And really, the the big one here is this items, you know, and you know it's going to have a checklist of, you know, thank you for your patience. Has your issue been resolved? Is there anything else? That's what mm -hmm. you should see in um, uh, in our playbook preview. So when we go here, notice assess now shows up, right, because we put an action under it. And we're gonna we're, let's show what skip looks like. That's totally fine. Do, 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 do. Hopefully, it's gonna show. There we go. <laughs> Again, it's a, come on. And, PDIs are speedy, right? Yeah. And, and so you know, here you go, right? Here's the checklist. It's gonna be on the incident that we're testing, right? Rather than right. creating a new one. And yeah. you have checklists. So. And when all of those are complete, it's going to be complete. And, and I would say that the last one, which, you know, we, we don't need to go too much into is just the, the send email, right? Mm -hmm. Just 
a really, really simple, you can select who you want this to go to. This will always go to the caller. You, you, you can pre-fill this information and you can also pre-fill this, right? And we're gonna save and close. And I'm also gonna do an instruction just to, to show instruction. And I can't spell, but so. <laughs> And, and the send email is, is relatively straightforward. I'll, I'll show that as well. The reason I, I put one other action there is I'm actually going to show how you can create an optional activity, which okay. sh shout out to, to LH um, because she is doing a, uh, a lab at knowledge on this because uh, it's not intuitive. <laughs> um, and the docs don't really talk about it a lot, but I'll show us, uh, show people how you can, how you can do it. So sweet. So we have this activity demo again. So notice the resolve ones. I'm just going to skip all of this to, to move things along. And on activities, notice this is starting in sequential order. Like you could have it super flexible where only start with the previous, start at the same time, maybe start after. This is what the, the email one kind of looks like, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can you know, send email and this will now you know, send that email. Mm -hmm. And, and so what I wanted to show quickly is not every process has like a predefined thing. Like maybe we wanted to send an email on the intake, right. But maybe not every time you get an incident, you want to send it. So only certain sure. incidents. So yeah. what ServiceNow designed was this notion of, uh, optional activities. And so the, the confusing part here is you want to go to the sys PD process definition. Once you find your activity. Um, you can uh, find the activity that you want to make optional. So let's say I want to make the send email one optional. What you do is you change this start rule to be manual. So now it'll move, move away from our, our flow or our, our process. Now notice this is only manual for this lane. So if you want it in every lane, you have to remove this as well. So it applies to every lane. Or if you only want to be able to do this optional activity inside this lane. So for our case, maybe we want it on every lane. So send email is probably a really good one to have optional. And um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to activate this. But you you could you could add send email <clears throat> as a as one in in the resolve lane and still have the optional one available if you Correct. if you add if you have both of them. Correct. You could. Yeah. Okay. So now now when I refresh this, it'll actually move away. You won't actually see it anymore. So the interface isn't there. And that's why it's a little confusing to, to find. Um, but this way you essentially can have an optional activity. Notice it's not there anymore. But if we test, on our handy dandy number two, and the reason you have like, previous running ones won't actually you know get all of your changes so you, it always has to be like a new only going forward very similar to workflow like there's a contacts mm -hmm. or a flow um, yeah and so let's say we've we've marked this one as complete and now notice there is a, a the three dots here that wasn't there before so these these dots aren't there and this one's going to have a add an activity and so now I can add an activity that says, hey, send email. So this is really useful if you have like a send email, maybe escalate, right? If you need yeah. to like escalate occasionally or maybe get an approval, right, to do something. These are really good ones to, you know, potentially make optional. Um, and when you do this, it essentially loads this, um, uh, loads this one inside of here. So. And it only applies to this specific playbook um, or this running instance of it. So not everyone's going to have the send email, but right. this one, because you added it will. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the last thing I would just want to show, and we won't go into detail, is let's say you wanted to add more buttons here. <laughs> like um, <laughs> they have this notion of action activity. So on the sys declarative action uh, assignment. So if, if you went to, uh, uh, playbook, uh, oh, playbook, these actions here. So if you want an action on a, on a given playbook, if you want an action on a given stage, um, within it, so those lanes, or if you want it on a given activity, 
Um, what you do is you would create one and obviously use ones that already exist. So like this one does assign to me, um, which, you know, if the record condition meets this, then that action essentially uh, shows up. And in this case, it's a server side script. So very simple, just assign it to you. So this is, you, you can make them uh, server side scripts. You can reuse clients, UI actions. So it's really, really flexible. Um, but once you create your action assignment, you then link it to the experience that it's related to. So that's, that's just like, if you want it very specific to an activity versus if you want it always available on, on a given playbook. So in this case, because this one is on the playbook, it doesn't need to be act, uh, part of an activity uh, definition. It's essentially on the entire playbook and I'll, I'll show it where, where that assigned to me is. Um, and this is what ServiceNow has as an example for the incident response demo. And um, we'll, I'll kind of just talk a little bit about some of the things here and we can, we could kind of sum it up. So, oh, I meant to, oh, oops, I meant to open that. So <laughs> we'll run it twice. Um, and, and so you notice, you know, they kept it pretty simple. There's, you know, a couple lanes. So they had four. So identification, which was similar to our intake, mm -hmm. logging, which is similar to our assess. And they just had, they separated out resolve and closure. Um, so let me open that while we uh, go through it. And so, you know, they did a confirmed contact detail. So, right, this is the record one. This is some instructional. This one's a list, which is kind of cool. If you wanted to show some related lists, they, they had an example of, you know, what fields to show for an incident. And then there's actually some advanced properties here um, to determine you know, what, what list of things to show. So if you wanted to show similar ones for a given caller, right, they, they essentially put the, um, the conditions in there. And, uh, and yeah, so this is, this is just kind of a, a, a small example. Uh, and, and so kind of, you know, what, what that looks like here, right, is, you know, they, they, you know, bring that playbook here, um, the add activity, um, they had an example of it with escalate incident and the actual, it's not here, but there's three dots where that should be here. That's like assigned to me shows up. Um, but I think it's because it's assigned to somebody. I didn't actually look at the condition, um, that this won't, it won't show up. So that kind of summarizes a lot of different things you can do with playbooks to kind of get started. Um, you got your instructions, you got your user forms, you have your your lists, and um, you uh, you have your 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 actions that you can take on things. Um, what do you, what do you think, John? Do you feel more confident being able to to do playbooks now? Yeah, no, I I, I love it. I think playbooks are really handy. Um, and you know, going back to that whole, uh, what's the word there? Uh, thing that ServiceNow is doing as far as doing low code, no code solutions. You know, you did almost everything without. In fact, uh, you did everything without writing any code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all configuration based. It's it's very um, powerful. You know, kind of like Flow Designer. Where you can do a lot of things, um, and and do it all without having to write uh, serious code, but you can back it up with code if needed, right? Um, yeah, so that would be a little bit more complex. Uh, you'd probably <laughs> write like a uh, an action or an activity that does the code, and then mm -hmm. show it on a given case or a situation. So yeah, yeah. Um, but what is nice is this is definitely unlocks your like citizen developer, right? That, you know, if you wanted to enable other people to create these processes, you, they have like a playground to, to do it. Yeah. And, you know, with you saying that it, it kind of makes me think, you know, so way back when, when I was a lot younger, I used to build exercise equipment. And uh, so I, I worked on a, a conveyor line, right? You know, you, you had the, exercise equipment started at the beginning, which was nothing. And then it would get built along the line. And a lot of times 
the people at each station would define their own processes after a certain amount of time because you know doing rep repetitive actions you really have a lot of time to think <laughs> and figure out the best way to do what you're doing and so when you say you know the citizen developer it really allows like you know help desk to say you know what I want to define my process better because I think the way we're currently doing it is not efficient. We're, we're wasting time doing this and that where we don't need to. And, and it allows the user to really um, make their process their own and, and, and they can experiment with it, you know, like, Oh, let's change this. No, nope, that didn't work. That added more complications. <laughs> and so it, it's just, it's, it's a very, powerful way to empower uh the end user or the the person using that right it's it's not you're not stuck being defined by someone that you know that's just like oh well this is how it's got to be you have to follow this every time and it's like no look i do this every day I, i've got some ideas let's 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 work them through and see how well they work out you know so i think i think that's that's a great benefit there yeah, and I, and I think there's there's even power to once you've done a playbook and you can now analyze, you know, are like there's there's probably metrics that you can start tying to, like how effective things are actually being filled out or completed, yeah. where things are getting stuck in the process. So um, I definitely think there's, you know, I, I still really believe that playbook is like really the future of, you know, any kind of agent experience or it's a, it's going to be a core part. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really excited to constantly see it grow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I I agree completely with that. Cool. All right. Well, we wanted to keep this short. I was I'm under the thirty minute mark, so <laughs> over. but hopefully this is helpful. So. Yes, for sure. Cool. So we'll give ourselves a little clap. And, <laughs> and and next week, where John and I are going to talk about knowledge. So if you yep. are going knowledge, John and I are going to tell you kind of which agendas we think are going to be super interesting, kind of, kind of explore it. So it'll be a little less technical on the next one and more just cool things um, that we think you guys should check out at, at knowledge. So. Yeah. And you should stop by the cast desk or so whatever booth weeks, we have. Right? Oh, weeks. that's in yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you should stop by if you're going to New, uh, New York is in two weeks. Yeah. Um, New York is in two weeks. Yeah. yeah and. Uh, you should stop by because we may be broadcast. You know, we may have a person on the floor uh, as part of our our stream. John, John will give you free stuff. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> well. So. I'll tell them to give you free stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, we'll see you guys.